Nation. The hobby is the people. Weekly news and interviews. It's your number one source. Sports Card Nation. The hobby is the people. Sports Card Nation. Welcome to another stocked and loaded episode of the Sports Card Nation podcast. The show that brings you all the important hobby news, discussions, debates, opinions, info, and interviews with key hobby and sports dignitaries. Also, if you're good, you know we are going to give away something. Now, here's the guy that wanted the cards more than the gum. John Newman. What is up? Welcome to episode 93 of the Sports Card Nation podcast. It is Friday. We are back. That's both good things. Uh, at least I think so. Uh, great guest today. It's actually going to be a two-part interview. And so, first off, let me let me introduce who's going to be on the show. Uh, Mr. Peter Steinberg, president of SGC Grading. And they are a sponsor of the show, full disclosure, but... Uh, I did get to ask them uh, some listener questions just to be uh, transparent. And the interview went over almost an hour and a half. And I didn't want to do a two, two and a half hour show. So a little more than half of the interview is going to appear on this episode, episode 93. And the remaining portion of the interview uh, is going to be on episode 94. So it's two parts. I did not cut anything out. As you know, I, I tell you all the time, we don't cut any content out, hence the, the length of the interview. I did not want to limit Peter's appearance. He We got to talking about all sorts of topics, uh, including your questions. And so I didn't want to cut anything out. I didn't want to uh, give him a time limit. He didn't give me one. And But I also don't want an epic marathon two-and-a-half-hour episode. I think... Stuff gets lost in translation. I think uh, even my own attention span, I I know people out there probably don't want a two and a half hour episode. And so we're going to do it over two parts. It's the first time we've had an interview go over the course of two episodes. But I think it will be more consumable uh, and uh, and keep the length of the episode uh, at a recent uh, length. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, he was very forthcoming. Uh, he was uh, very accountable, admitted uh, some wrongs uh, that uh, they've done, but uh, you know they've done more rights than wrongs. But uh, I appreciate accountability. I'm I'm always one to say my bad or I was wrong on something. And uh, when I hear other people do it, uh, it's refreshing. He will do that. He will also tell you. Um, some things they're they're doing to get back uh, on the track. So uh, I hope you enjoy that. I appreciate Peter being so uh, giving and forthcoming of his time. Uh, also on this episode, uh, we're going to talk about, if you've heard the storyline, uh, about the Jackie Robinson bond bread cards I've sort of facilitated. Uh, those are back uh, in Carolyn's hands, and I got some further news on that front i'll save it for the what's cracking segment but the little little tease there uh if you will and uh you know with that being said let's uh let's uh wrap up the intro here and get on with the show showtime time for this week's incoming product releases all right, coming out today, if you're listening to this on show release day, 9-11, 2020 TriStar Signature Series Live Edition. Also today, 2020 Panini Mosaic, No Huddle Football, Choice Football, and Mosaic Football. 9-16, we have a couple releases, 2019-20, Upper Deck Clear Cut Hockey, I'll be checking that one out. Myself, I, I got a thing for acetate cards. I don't know what it is. I just like them. Uh, big release also the same day in the baseball world, 2020. Tops Allen and Ginter. Not a huge Allen and Ginter guy personally. I open some, usually retail, and 
you know, a blaster box, a couple cello packs, and I called a, a day. Uh, on the 17th, 2019, 20 Panini Opulence Basketball. On the 18th, four releases. 2020 Panini Chronicles Baseball. 2020 Panini National Treasures Collegiate Football. And 2020 Panini Origins uh, Football. And one more, 2020 Leaf Trinity Football. So that gets us uh, up to date for the week, up until the 18th. A uh, total of about a double-digit uh, releases, uh, at least in the sports uh, end of the hobby, uh, for the week. Sports Card Nation podcast is your weekly hobby and sports podcast. Now on tons of platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, and many more. Listen to in 44 different countries globally, Sports Card Nation is one of the most interactive podcasts around, providing great content, giveaways, and some of the hobby's best interview guests without time constraints. Thousands can't be wrong. We want to thank all the wonderful listeners around the world, our awesome guests on the show, and our tremendous sponsors making us what we are today. Remember, without you, there's no us. It's time for What's Cracking. All right, let's start out with the Jackie Robinson bond bread uh, story. If you've either been listening to the show or follow us on social media, you know someone local reached out to me with a couple... Bond Bread 1947 Jackie Robinson cards. Uh, I've been facilitating that deal. I'll, I'll make this short as, as I can. Been facilitating that deal, and those cards are back in Carolyn's hands. They graded one, graded a four, one graded a 3.5. I instructed her an auction house is the best way to sell those rather than eBay. And um, I sent uh, those photos of the cards to Mr. Ken Golden from Golden's Auctions, and he was interested. And so I passed on that information to Carolyn, told her to reach out to Ken at Golden. And so it looks like this story is going to have uh, probably a pretty cool ending if those two cards uh, wind up in the Golden catalog and sold, uh, I think, to she'll do very well and so i'm happy and it's a great you know it'll be something you know jackie robinson's my guy i would have loved to have the cards obviously but uh you know for what they're gonna go for and and you know i probably could have bought them but uh to spend that kind of money uh and just kind of keep the cards which is what i would have did uh, i'm not gonna be able to do that so I'm glad to be involved in some small capacity, and it'll be something uh, I can look back on fondly and, uh, you know, know that I helped someone out, did the right thing. And so, uh, pretty cool story uh, in the end. Again, any new updates, I'll, I'll let you guys know, uh, you know, once they go to market and sell and, and whatnot. But that's what it looks like right now, that it will be in the next uh, Golden Auction catalog. Well, if you thought it's just cards breaking the ceiling of prices uh, during this pandemic, guess again. Supplies are insane price-wise. If you're looking for Card Saver 1 or Card Saver 2 semi-rigid, you are going to have to give up your firstborn son. And it's not just semi-rigid, but top loaders have went up, soft sleeves, sheet uh nine pocket sheets uh, i'm assuming with pandemic production down uh the materials are harder to acquire or it could just be companies taking advantage of the situation but either case stuff is insane i uh i use semi rigids but i was fortunate enough to buy a about 10 or 20 boxes of them uh, or actually 12 boxes of them uh, before the pandemic hit. 
So I, I, you know, if I had to buy these things, I think I saw one on, on eBay. I mean, um, I'm not even interested in paying that, but I think it was $185 for some card savers on on eBay, and I think that was a sold listing. And so that's insane when you think about. There's uh, what two two hundred in there or a hundred? I'm not even sure. It's a buck a piece almost, and that's. That's crazy, but uh, one of the uh, non-good benefits, unless you're sitting on a bunch of supplies, but you honestly, you know, it's one thing to buy a wax box and, and sell it for, you know, 10 times what you paid, honestly, but when you think about supplies, you almost got to feel uh, guilty uh, doing that as much as they are in demand knowing, you know, that these things were 20 bucks under normal conditions and you're selling them for 180 it's just i don't know that just seems definite like uh price gouging but you know someone's buying them because they're going uh, for that and speaking of card savers you'll need those to submit your cards to psa uh nope you won't psa has come out and said due to the shortage and price hike of such card savers they're relaxing their policy and they will allow submitted cards to be shipped in top loaders and other holders. I have to uh, admit, that's a nice gesture. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, but still, uh, much delays, uh, issues there. Uh, but despite that, and despite their shutdown, they reported a record quarter earnings. And so... The beat just goes and on. People are just submitting cards at a breakneck pace. And they're just printing their own money. And so, you know, uh, grading is whether you like it or don't like it, whether you agree with it or don't agree with it, it's become such a huge part of the hobby. And listen, if you've heard me talk about it, you know, I sell a lot of graded cards. I submit a lot of cards for grading and i was a guy in the the 90s who thought it was a passing fad i thought it was silly i thought it was uh, just a, a, an insane concept that wouldn't last a passing fad that would come and go and here we are in 2020 and it's a huge part of the hobby uh, you know if you ask me what percentage i'd say you know, 60, 70%, if not more. It's become, you know, I was listening to another show. Honestly, I can't remember which one it was. But they were talking on that show about it's become increasingly difficult to sell raw cards. Now, don't get me wrong. Raw, raw cards always will sell. There's always a market for them. But it's a little more difficult, especially on the high dollar end. If it's a high dollar, high end card, it's very difficult to sell in raw form. It, it's almost where you have to you have to grade it. So uh, PSA relaxing their uh, card saver policy, allowing you to send in almost any anything you like. They recommend uh, top loaders. Tops has collaborated again. They are just producing cards left and right from living set to the. 2020 project tops now and these individual player sets uh the next man up is after pete alonzo here cal ripkin jr so cal ripkin jr inspired set and you know there'll be more to come uh similar to that uh tops uh, also while we're talking about tops they uh you know if you were in the montgomery 582 club you most likely were able to order a box of Topps Chrome Ben Baller. Then they did say you could enter uh, for a raffle to get uh, potentially another box. I did that, and I did uh, get an email saying congratulations. I, I saw a lot of posts where a lot of people got that same email congratulating. So uh, I'm getting a box, so I purchased another one. Uh, they're both processing, so we'll see uh, how that goes. If you know anything about me, those will be uh, for resale. Uh, another uh, thing that I've been doing, I just invested in a couple cards. Just 
fractional shares. Rally Road, they have an app, the Rally app, uh, stock broke, uh, stock brokerage in a sense for uh, items other than stocks. You know, luxury cars, watches, sports cars, purses, and I opened an account uh, with Rally, and I made my first two uh, air quotes here investments, uh, if you will, on two cards, a. Uh, uh, SGC 10 Jerry Rice rookie and a 1957 Topps Mickey Mantle PSA 8. So I bought uh, the max shares that the the app would allow me on those two cards. I'm, I'm you know I didn't put a lot of money into the app. I think just 30 40 bucks and we'll uh, see what that gets us. You know I'm just having fun with it, kind of playing with it, seeing what comes out. And, what I can invest in, and, and you know, I, I posted on that on, on Twitter, I know a couple people responded that, you know, how is that, you don't really own a physical card, but you do, it's not like blockchain where the card doesn't exist, the card exists, and you own, uh, in this case, you're a minority owner, it's a small part of that card, depending on what that card eventually sells on the secondary market, you make out and get more money you know like any investment or any uh you know where you put money into there's always the risk that you don't make money and that's that's the fun of it right and so it's going to be something i do as they issue new openings new ipos on on different items and i may even invest in some other things other than sports cards right now it's just the two cards but I may expand and, and just see what's out there. And if it's something I think that uh, by investing in, I can I can make more money than I have. You got to really look at stuff like that. Speaking a big speaking of big money, the SD new Michael Jordan record holder is an SGC pristine ten. I believe I spoke about it last week, but just in case, here I'm going to hit you with it again. Four hundred twenty thousand dollars four hundred twenty thousand it's the highest sold michael jordan flair rookie card to date and it's in an sgc holder one of one card shop offers a tremendous breaking experience great customer service and they're constantly pulling fire Steve and his family take care of you like one of their own and treat you right. Anyone can break, but no one treats you like one of one. Come check them out on Instagram at one underscore of underscore one underscore card underscore shop. For all the hot breaks, get a gold mailer headed your way. Happy to have the next gentleman back on the 101 Card Shop guest line. We've He's been on the show previously. Uh, been a while. Was uh, the, the National in Chicago in 2019. Uh, we got to interview him on site. Uh, really uh, great time talking to him then. Um, you know, they are a sponsor of the show. I've, I've talked to this gentleman uh, many times uh, since then, but never uh, as part of the show. And he's back. Uh, so without further ado, I want to welcome Peter Steinberg from SGC Grady. John, thanks so much for having me. I'm, uh, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Yep. So the last time we spoke on air, as I said, was uh, that National in Chicago. A lot has transpired, uh, to say the least, uh, since then. You guys have, have expanded. The, 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 the grading market itself has uh, seen some changes and, and ebbs and flows kind of you know uh, you know talk uh, from from then kind of you know what's uh, what's new I guess is, is the best way to say it I, I got you I mean it's really a question of where to start because <laughs> as, as you know certainly a lot has changed since the 2019 national yeah I mean, obviously there have been some very big changes in the hobby itself um, you know I was thinking the other day what would a 2020 national even look like you know, just because there's so many, um, you know, 
new people entering the space on a daily basis. Um, I, I almost feel like you couldn't find a venue that could fit all of us. Yeah. Um, but as far as STC goes, I mean, thinking back to that 2019 national is like, you know, it's almost like thinking back, geez, it feels like 30 years. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, our staff at that time was extremely, extremely small. Um, our business was a, a very small fraction of what it is now. The demand, um, you know, it's almost hard to put into words just how much has changed. Because literally almost everything has changed besides the service that we offer, which is which is the grading itself. Yeah. Um, that is the one thing you can tell me 2019 National, 2018 National, you could go all the way back to the 2004 National. This company has known how to grade cards for a very long time. And if there's anything that, that has remained the same and will continue to remain the same in the future, it's the quality of our grading. Besides that, I can tell you... Um, I can tell you that quite quite a bit has changed and will continue to change, but those those are good changes. Yeah, well, obviously you said you've grown as a company employee-wise. You've moved into uh, a bigger building. Kind of speak to to that uh, and, and, and the, you know, the difficulties of doing that, and then you add in that you're doing it, in a sense, during a pandemic period. Uh, it, it bumps that degree of difficulty, I would uh, assume, uh, up a, a little bit definitely so we've added a a large space to our existing office so we didn't actually move uh we just kind of added yeah and the nice thing is those offices are right next to each other so we were very fortunate to be able to do that um i'm not gonna lie it's not the, the best space in the world mm -hmm. i wish we were in um kind of a, a little bit different of a layout simply because um you know, what we do is very unique. You know, the, the, the individuals across the, the hall from us, there's like a law firm, you know, this is not a law firm. We are yeah. dealing, you know, cards from one department to the next, and we have big vaults, you know, within our office. It's a very unique thing. And I think being that that's the case, we would have loved to purchase a building for SGC, you know, and I think that since the, since the demand just spiked so rapidly in such a short amount of time, we didn't have that luxury. Yeah. You know, we couldn't just close down for two weeks and say, okay, let's move everything over there. You know, that would have been really nice, but we were not able to. So um, that was an adjustment. You know, that was something we really needed to kind of adapt to, not only on the fly, but very, very quickly. Because the difficult thing here is no matter what has to get done, cards have to be moving out the door. Yeah. And if cards are not moving out the door, then I can't look at, you know, the comments on Facebook or the emails that we get or, or to be frank with you, John, the, the, the complaints about our turnaround time and yeah. you know, any anything like, um, you know, I want to feel like I'm helping those people. Yeah. I want to feel like even though I wish I could be doing more, I'm doing my best. And if I'm not getting cards out the door every day, including today, and by the way, we're recording on a Saturday, I have a full staff here moving cards out the door. Yeah. Um, I'm not doing my job, and it's all, it's all, you know, it's all BS, and that's that's not what I'm looking to do. So it's not an easy thing to have a business that revolves around, you know, a very unique and very impactful service, but at the same time, that service is kind of um, laid out in the context of a, a turnaround time that you you must do your best to maintain. So it's it's a challenge. This is not easy, but we are very much up to the challenge. And I, I I've said it in previous interviews. I I could not be prouder of the work that we've done, that we're doing, and I am so much looking forward to the future. Um. So I it's it's a really good time for SGC, and and I'm looking forward to kind of you know diving a bit deeper on that with you. Yep, no doubt. And and to kind of put you a little bit on the spot, you know, you mentioned the future. I mean. Stuff Rome wasn't built in a day. Do you? I mean, are there any plans? Maybe someday, like you said, uh, have a full fledged uh, location, or even maybe multiple uh, locations. Uh, uh, have you know? Is that something uh, on the table? I mean, obviously, it might be preliminary or just even a thought process. But is that something you leave the door open to? One thousand <laughs> percent. Like one thousand percent. It's not a matter of if. It's a yep. matter of when. Yeah. Um, this company, 
SEC, our brand, what we do, the way we do it, it's not going away. It's here to stay, and it's only going to grow from here. Um, and we're ready. I mean it when I say that. I mean, John, you look at this place, and it is a well-oiled machine at this point. And that's that's what the challenge is. Yeah. You know? In other words, I wish we didn't have to make some of the adaptations that we've had to make, even just regarding COVID and things like that. But... Man, I mean, I look at this operation every day, and my thought is, well, how can we move more cards out the door while maintaining the standards? Yeah. And, you know, my management team looks at the operation, and they say, hey, I manage this department. How can I make this better? You know, and their guys say, hey, I'm the one who's encapsulating this card. You know, maybe if I move my holders on the left side rather than the right side, I have to put on next to 50 cards a day. Yeah. You know, everyone just wants to be better, and I say it to all of our new employees, and there are many of them. If you see something that will make this company better, you better not only tell your, your superior in your department, but I want to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I, that's, that's why I'm so confident in this team, because... Any of our any of our customers, okay, that have you know really just been waiting for their cards for far too long. I can promise you, if you were in this building, you would understand. You would understand the challenges, and you would understand just how, um, you know, just how much goes into this, and how we we are doing it right, folks. I can promise everyone that you're not going to see anything and be like, well, why are you doing it that way? There's not one of those things, because that was SDC, honestly, in the past. There were a few things that we did it a certain way, and you ask yourself, well, why are we doing it that way? Those improvements have been made. We are really on a a very very, uh, strong track here, and the staff is our best part. I mean, this this is quite a team, and we are growing by the day, so... It's very exciting. I talk about it, and I get exciting, and it's tough. It's tough because I know that there are a lot of people that are frustrated, but you will end up excited, too. Your yeah. orders will return, guys, and your cards are going to look awesome. And I, I promise, whether your card gets a 10 or whether it gets a 7.5, it's graded accurately. Yeah. You didn't just gloss over your cards that you waited so long to get back, that you paid good money to get graded. Um, and at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Going to step aside for a real quick break. We'll be right back with more with Peter Steinberg from SGC. Hey folks, tired of going to the retail store and finding the wax shelves cleaned out bare? I've got the answer for you. And that answer is Hotbox Cards. They offer a monthly subscription service at a great price level. What's better than getting a box of sports cards on your doorstop every month? Not a whole lot. And these boxes don't cost a whole lot. Let me tell you what's in each and every hot box. Three Relic or Auto cards. Three unopened hobby packs. 50 bonus cards featuring stars, rookies, semi-stars, inserts, and parallels. And one in every five boxes has a red hot envelope with a surprise card. They also honor expired redemptions with a comparable item. So there's no worry about getting that old redemption card with nothing to show for it. Check them out at www.hotboxcards.net and put in promo code SCNATION. SCNATION all in caps to save even a little bit more money. Sports Card Nation is back with Peter Steinberg. I know you, so I know your passion, but even anyone that's listening that doesn't know you other than who you are and and what you represent, I mean, you you can hear that passion uh, in your voice and, and, uh, you know, uh, you love what you do. You want to do the best at what you do. Uh, There's growing pains. That happens in any industry. This isn't just relegated to the grading uh, sort of the niche. Uh, This don't matter what... Uh, line of work it's it is uh, and then like you said you factor in covid and you know it makes it even a little bit more uh you know uh, to navigate those waters become a little bit more uh difficult and uh you know you you've you 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 waded through you're doing well i mean when i spoke to you uh you know on the show in 2019 uh, in chicago you, you know, your business was, was very good and, and steadily rising. Here we are, 
you know, uh, over a year uh, from that. And I mean, I, I, I don't want to speak for you. That's why I'm asking you. I mean, it's it's even trending way, way high. I mean, did you, I know you anticipated uh, improvement and, and more business. Did you, did you even, honestly, did you think it was going to be to this level? Good question. Um, you know, to put it to put it simply, John, just speaking about that passion. Um, SGC. You know, I am a young guy, but in in my young career, literally since the day I walked in here at a very entry level um, role, this is like this is a major part of my life, man. Yeah. I remember, I was a collector, and I was an obsessive collector. I still am. You know, yeah. like. I like I'm I'm on eBay all the time. I drive my girlfriend nuts, <laughs> you know. Like I just I'm looking at cards and, and you know watching watching the sports and watching you know the prices move. And um, I think what that kind of translated to is that passion for the hobby itself was then just kind of shifted into SGC because once I became a part of this team, I remember I was really fearful that after I was told I was hired. Although I was excited for day one, I was really fearful that I'd walk in and I wouldn't like what I saw. Yeah. And I'd be like, this is a scam. Like, these guys suck. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. I have a guy who's just assigning grades, you know, practically with his eyes closed, and an outsider who's not even looking at the card that he's supposed to be protecting, you know, and the opposite was true. And yeah. at that time, we were really small. I mean, we were. You know, we were the guys who were doing it right, but the guys who had not been recognized yet for doing it right. And that's what drove this passion in me. I was like, wait, 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 this company's this big, and they do it this way, and we're this big, and we do it this way? That doesn't make sense, you know? And like I said, I think the passion for the industry itself, the hobby that I've loved since, geez, I can remember, um, it, it just... It was very organic, you know. It's not like oh, Peter got a raise, and then you know he got a yeah. raise for being passionate, and yeah. now he's passionate. Or you know, sometimes I I do read comments. I care about what our customers are saying. And one thing that really gets me is they're like, "What a salesman," you know. And I'm just like, "No!" Like you know, I was at, I was at dinner with my parents last night, and they have to tell me to kind of cool it down because I get into talking about SPC. <laughs> And I'm like sweating at the dinner table. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I love this place. And what I'm telling all of you is, John, you could tell them. We've spoken before. Yep. I sound just like I do now, you know, live. Yeah, it's not, it's not a shtick. It's not a shtick. It's not an right. act. Uh, you know, there's people to do that stuff that, and it works for them, you know, truth be told. And that's their thing and their business. But, uh, no, I've, I've, I've always got that from you. Even, even that first interview, that, that, interview I did with you in Chicago was the first time I ever spoke to you and I came away I remember talking to my son that night uh who's a little bit in the cars not in the same vein as me and you know I said man I just spoke to a gentleman probably not that much even older than you and just tremendous and and you just you can tell he loves what he does cares what he does and and you know, I remember saying then to him, like, you know, these guys are coming. And, and because, uh, you know, it's not about one guy, but when you have a, a strong guy, uh, you know, at the helm or, or near that, uh, that that's driving force, it makes a huge difference. Uh, you know, uh, it, you know I, I come from a football coach. You know, I used to coach football. And, you know, certain coaches make you want to, like, go out there and, and play. You know, and others maybe not, not so much. And uh, right. you know, I think you fall on the, uh, the the positive side. Let's do this, let's go, kind of uh, thing. And again, uh, some of that, some people do that as kind of a shtick. You know, they they they're out in front of the team and they do that, and then they go through the next door and like, okay, what you know, all demeanor changes, right? It's just all a, a big front. That's not uh, the case with you. And I, I, you know, again for for what what it's worth in knowing you, uh, I know that's the, the the case. Even the conversations we've had, we're we're not recording. Uh, where there's no reason to you have to do that, and and you're the same way. You 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 are who you are, and that and that's a, a good thing. And uh, you know, uh, a few people, a few companies that probably 
uh, could benefit from having someone with that mindset. Let's just put it put it that way. So. Well, I, I appreciate it. I really do, man. I mean, I don't, and we've spoken about it before, I don't pretend to be the smartest guy in the room. I don't pretend to be any more than anyone listening to this who just loves cards and cares enough about this hobby to be tuning into the show right now. Um, yeah. I, I just got lucky. I was put in... A very fortunate, um, you know, I was just very fortunate to be in, in the role I was in at the right time. And I think that passion and, and the desire and the fact that I will just outwork anyone else because I love it so much, that's what got me here. And I, I, I said it in, in interviews past, I listen to just a, a lot of smart people, you know, yeah. and, and that's important. And, you know, I think where we run into problems is where you just assume that everything we're doing is done perfectly and it's the right way and we, we've made no mistakes in the past and we're not going to make any ever again. You know, no one wants to hear that. People are too yeah. smart for that. And, I, geez, I could go through a laundry list, man, of just things I would have done differently. Yeah. You know, if I could go back, but I could also go through a, a much longer laundry list, like I said, of the things that I am just so, you know, so so proud of you know it's it's it really has been a journey you know for everyone listening as well i want you guys to know how much we do care about you i also want you to understand this is exhausting yeah you know my staff is here on saturday we are fighting tooth and nail to to hold on to your support to earn your next order you know i mean it when i say you know we are adding people quite literally it's like I talked to some, some of our guys, and I'm like, hey, Matt, how long have you been here? And he's like, um, I think tomorrow's a month. And my mind is blown. Yeah. And I'm like, Matt, you've been here a month, dude? He's like, yeah. It's like these guys, our system is so well built out, and there's so many layers of, it's hard to describe, man. It's like it's almost like I can't be everywhere at once, but this passion and the love for SGC, you literally find it throughout the company. Yeah. I do not stick out that this company is being like the excited one. Um, these guys care about it just as much as me, and if they didn't, I'd have no shot of building this thing. Yeah. You know? And I can say right now, our staff, um, looking back to January of this year, I believe yesterday we officially hit the number where our staff is five times as large as it was then. Yeah. Which essentially wow. means that I spend all my days hiring onboarding, training, getting people excited, and, you know, not to kind of ramble on about this process, but I think it's important. My interviews that I have with these people, um, I'm not looking at resumes. Like, sure, you've, you've worked in a, a marketing or a sales department for a company for, you know, 12 years. It, it just doesn't matter to me. I yeah. want to know who you are. Yep. I don't have an interview that runs under like an hour and a half. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a, hey, talk to me. You know? Yeah. And, and I really get a good feeling for people. And what, what I find to be very special is I grab guys that are kind of straight out of college that don't really have a direction and never really knew what they wanted to do, but they knew that they loved sports. And, you know, they're fired up to be successful, and I grab them. And then there are other people that are older and just never really felt that their potential was, mm -hmm. was um, you know, recognized. You know, like it was never tapped into, and and they're they're almost better than what their resume implies. And I give those people a shot, and I put a lot of uh, support behind them. And it's it's quite a uh, fulfilling thing, man, to hear one of your one of your older employees say, you know, this is the best place I've ever worked in my yeah. life. And that individual has worked quite a few jobs. You know, yeah. has time even serving in our country's military. Um, you know that really <laughs> that gets me. You know, yeah. That that makes me say, you know, this is hard, but I wouldn't give it up for the world because we're doing something really special here, and we're doing it around sports cards. Something that I and you and all of your listeners, for whatever reason, we just have loved this stuff. You know, yeah. Yep. It's it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. We've got to step aside for another quick break, but we'll be back with more from Peter Steinberg. Pastime Marketplace offers a line of durable graded card cases made for collectors who want high quality graded card storage that is virtually indestructible. Their cases are waterproof, dustproof, airtight, and designed to protect your valuable collection. 
Check them all out at www.pastimemarketplace.com. Protect your best with the best. And remember to save 10% off your total order. Use the promo code SCN10. That's capital S, capital C, capital N, 10 for 10% off your total order at pastimemarketplace.com. Once again, we are back with Peter Steinberg from SGC. I know this uh, from talking, and I, and I kind of knew this with, with, with you guys even before you told me. And I, I think we we touched on it a little bit on the last interview on that you were on the show uh, in Chicago. You know, when you hi, you know when, when you when people hear well, we hire new people as, well, from a grading company, they th- they kind of make the assumption that that person's given a cubicle or a room and here's your cards, put the grades on them. And that's not, that's not how it works. There is a, a training program. They kind of got to start uh, from the, the bottom rung, if you will, and, you know, prove themselves and through the process and move up uh, to, to they get to that point where you're comfortable uh, at SGC that they can uh, adhere to the standards that you're trying to, uh, to live by and and I you know just kind of you know I I've had this conversation with you before but for those out there listening kind of fill in those blanks maybe even for them you got it um yeah so you know you're you're 100 percent right John when you said that these people aren't just given a cubicle and a stack of cards um <laughs> first off we don't believe in cubicles grading is a team sport yeah the more experts looking at a card uh the better I can tell you I've been in the room really on a daily basis where you just hear things like I'm between four and four or five. What do you think? Check out the wrinkle on the bottom edge on the back or, you know, I'm between nine, five and 10, you know, the corner it's, it's in between. I don't know which way to go on it. Um, those, 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 that sharing of that information and those opinions is so critical to us being the greater, the best graders in this industry. You know, if I was cracking the whip on these guys telling them, you know, more cards, more cards, more cards, we just wouldn't we just wouldn't have the standards we do today and that's why when i see our cards on ebay i'm not holding our breath hoping that the next one i scroll over is a 10 that looks like it should have been in a six holder you yeah. know um yeah. <laughs> and again being that it is the most important part of the process we do put a lot of stock into it um a lot of people assume as well that you know if i get a grader from one of our one of our competitors you know well, here's the grading room. Here's your stack of cards. Now you're an SPC grader. Absolutely not. Yeah. That, that individual has been, I assume, trained to be to be a grader at our, you know, with our competitor's brand name behind them. And yeah. We do things our way, and we demand them done our way. Yeah. And we know what we we know how to evaluate cards. <laughs> you know, this isn't. Uh, it's not even like this is, we don't believe this is our grading process. We believe that this is the right grading process. And if anyone isn't doing it this way, they're just flat out not doing it correctly. Now, you know, I can speak all day to the training process and, and how seriously we take it. But to put it, I think, simply, it's basically you don't just walk into the grading room. You can have experience at the other guys and, um, you know, that doesn't make you an SGC grader. Yeah. It could make you close. It could mean that you're further along in your training than, than someone else might be. But we really believe in, more than anything, promoting from within. And we, we have with quite a few individuals who have now entered our grading group. And it's just another thing that's special for me to see, John, because I remember when we were at that 2019 National and those individuals were just dreaming of a day when they can you know, see that kind of upward mobility in our company. And to watch their hard work lead to that um, is is really something special. And you know, you factor in the fact these guys know cards. Yeah. You know? And there are times when I walk in the room, and it's funny because the young guy, the guy who's you know my age or honestly even a, a bit younger, um, who's who's now in our grading room. Man, I mean, if you have a Panini Prism card of any year and you have a question on centering or what, you know, where to look out for that bad print, give this guy your card, you know, and he's got it. Yeah. Another guy is an expert at something else, you know. It, people assume that becoming a grader means you're just like an expert, you know. That word is this flexible word you could just put behind someone who's been doing something for a few years. That's not true, you know. So I think... Um, 
there's a lot to this process that people just don't understand. And one of them is that not everyone is an expert on everything. Yeah, but so it's our job to make sure an expert is evaluating what they're looking at. Yeah. You know. That's a great that's a great point. I mean, there's no way with you know this hobby too, Peter. There's so much new technology, new releases, then you factor in the, the pre war and the vintage cards that you get as well as the modern. I mean, there's no way one guy can can be an encyclopedia nor i don't know if you'd want that you know i'd rather have like you said five or six or whatever the number that really knows each kind of uh niche and, and era and then together you've got all your bases covered i think that's you know where you were going and, and what you try to do and you know if you have you know if the, if you have a person like that that knows everything even if that person existed and then they leave or god forbid something happens to them and you lose that where if you have people who know different components not that you want them to leave but you you know you have a little more flexibility there um uh it, rather than have one person know all the codes uh to the safe and uh yeah, you know uh, absolutely absolutely and, and don't take it wrong i don't want to give the impression like you know, almost we have modern guys and vintage guys and, yeah. you know, 80s and 90s guys. It's not like that at all. It's just simply that, you know, one of our, you know, one of our guys who's really, really strong in, you know, pre-war vintage might be really strong at Panini Prism, but he might also have a question. You know, yeah. you, you can't read something as accurately as possible if you kind of pretend that you know things that you don't. And I, I promise it is it is such a vital part. And I, I'm sure the other grading companies are listening. In fact, I'm positive of it just because I've seen what's come out after I say certain things and then they kind of follow the lead. And as, as, as mind-blowing as that is to me, <laughs> but I know that one of the most um, vital parts of the grading process is to ask others for advice. Because together we are stronger, and you know it's a lot harder to make a mistake or miss that that corner, you know, that yep. hides well if um, you know you have multiple sets of eyes on it. Now, to be honest with everyone, does that help turnaround time? Can we grade faster if we're asking each other questions? Probably not. You know, I could push a lot more cards out tomorrow if I wanted to than we are today. Mm -hmm. And I'd be sacrificing quality. And your tens might look like nines, and your nines might look like tens, and. You know, we may be mislabeling your parallel, you know, your parallels on the label, and, you know, there's dust in your holder, and, you know, it's, that's what it is. Yeah, I can yeah. do that. I can do that, and I think some others have, have kind of taken that philosophy and done that. And yeah. It's not what we're going to do. It's my job to catch yourself on Twitter on time, but if that means sacrificing quality, then that's, that's just not happening, you know? Um, we walk the walk. We talk the talk. But I can promise you, we also walk the walk. Um, anyone who's ever stepped foot in this building is just really, really happy with what they see, rather than the other way around. Yeah, and that's that's definitely a good thing, and I think a testament to the fact that you know, this like I mentioned earlier, I was nervous I'd walk in and say, you know, this whole thing's a scam. Well, at least again, I can't speak for anything else other than what what happens in this building. It is quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. No, nope, no doubt, and uh, refreshing to hear that perspective. You know, uh, like you said, you you could you could pu push cards out there quicker, but the quality and the integrity uh, goes by the wayside. And uh, I, I mean, I mean, there's probably a few people that don't care <laughs> about that, but I think the majority of folks do. And uh, I know I do. I mean, and I I submit <laughs> my cards to you guys as well. I. I want the card to be graded accurately. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we've seen recently some things where a card uh, has a, a label on it that has no business being there. And I don't want my card to, to be that card. You know, as uh, great as that grade might be when it's obvious that it doesn't live up to that, that billing. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate integrity. I try to be a person of it just in, in life. And so I think we, you know, as consumers, uh, when you hear a business uh, talk about integrity, that's that's not a bad thing. That's a a, a good thing. Um, you've recently, you know, changed the pricing structure. Uh, it's two tiers. Uh, you know, the need now level, which is a hundred dollars per card, but it's a super quick one to two day 
uh, turn around and the do not need now uh, which is remains which at the ten dollar uh, submission level uh, with a 43 to 48 day uh, level most of what I would submit would would fall into the the ten dollar category and and you know not I don't need this like right away necessarily kind of talk about the, the new structure how it's going uh and kind of where you know what led to ultimately you you making that change you got it so you know what led to making this change is the fact that um admittedly and i have i have mentioned it before um i had done an interview uh probably a few months back now i believe it was in either late april or early may and at that time, if I'm not mistaken, um, at that time, I believe, really, we were the only graders open for business. And our business was, yep. you know, way up. And um, I had done an interview where I, you know, kind of, you know, screamed and shouted about how great we were. And it, it, to some extent, worked a lot better than I thought. I mean, I thought <laughs> that, you know, maybe it would lead to an uptick of business by, you know, a, a few percent you know, and looking at our, our yearly uh, numbers and things like that. And what happened instead is we were just hit with a tsunami, a tsunami that I'd be lying if I said we were ready for, a tsunami that um, we were not ready to take on with the, the staff that we had, with the space that we had, with the processes in place. So really the fact that we're, we're kicking now and we're, we're getting cards out the door faster than ever um, is something special to me because to some extent we had to rebuild the entire way that this company operated simply because anytime a company sees a, a you know 12x increase in in business you're gonna have to make some serious changes you know yeah and I think I think um, you know, it, it's just it's just um, you know it's wild to think kind of where we were at <laughs> because I just can't imagine you know, that place again and I think that looking at why we made that change it's because we were kind of knocked on our ass early on um, we we fell so rapidly behind in turnaround time I think so quickly and didn't even have a great way to evaluate just how behind we were because those processes were not in place to account for that much business you know like I'm, I'm trying not to speak in in codes here, I want to lend everyone some insight into what we've, we've dealt with, because I think it is important for them to know. Basically, imagine everyone, if, you know, our company revolves around getting X amount of orders a day, um, our vault can hold X amount of cards a day, our verification team, our grading team, our encapsulation team, our equipment can do that amount of cards a day, give or take. 3x. So in other words, if we went up 3x, we didn't have to change much. We were ready for it. Yeah. But when that went up 12x, it all had to be redone. And in that in that rebuilding process is, I think, where we really fell behind. And where that's why, you know, just in previous kind of engagements I've had, I have apologized. Because I wish during that rebuilding process, I let everyone know sooner that, hey, we've got to rebuild some things here in a good way. Because yeah. you know, things are, are too good, almost. And what happened is, again, we fell behind very quickly, and we also literally on day one started hiring. You know, I know that from what I've heard about some of our, our large competitors, it's like they've started hiring. Well, you know, what do you do? We appreciate you waiting a decade and a half to, to feel <laughs> that the need has finally come because there's a loud mouth at SPC putting some pressure on you now. Basically, what happened is the business exploded. We started hiring literally as quickly as we could while maintaining standards. The entire company had to be rebuilt from from top down. And where we stand today, I can say very, very proudly that this week we had far and away our most productive week ever. We have a big, big board in the middle of our office that says our output that day, um, along with our weekly output. And this week, um, I believe we set the record for the amount of cards out in a single day in this company's history on Monday. Then I think we broke it on Thursday, and we broke it on Friday as well. And this week's total is far and away the most cards we've ever put out. So, yeah. you know, it's it's been a ride. It's been a lot of change. It's been a lot of improvement. Um, I think the reason that we did want to change those prices 
is basically because we wanted as much transparency as possible. One more quick break, and we'll be back with Peter Steinberg from SGC. Let me tell you about Iron Sports Cards and Collectibles. They're your number one source for all your PSA and now SGC submissions. They offer various service levels at the lowest prices around. They even provide the card savers your cards need to be submitted at no extra charge. Their elite status helps improve turnaround times. And their chat rooms keep you abreast of your subs and the status of your cards. What are you waiting for? Contact Rob on Facebook on Iron Sports Card Group. That's Iron Sports Card Group on Facebook. Or get a hold of Rob on Twitter at Iron Sports Cards, all one word, at Iron Sports Cards. They'll take care of you. Sports Card Nation is back with Peter Steinberg. I don't feel comfortable giving people a, a, a hard turnaround time right now because so much is changing so quickly. Yeah. The business can slow tomorrow. The business can go crazy tomorrow. Um, I, I, I just want to be as honest as possible. And I think that in doing that, I'm giving them an option where if they need their cards back, you would assume the card you need back is a more valuable card. You basically pay a price of $100, which is enough to scare away enough people where we can actually execute on that service and get it back to you in two days. And the other service is basically, look, we're going through a lot of changes right now. I'll keep you as updated as possible on turnaround time. But you're going to have to wait, and your wait may fluctuate based on you know events that take place in the future. So that's what we went with. It's ugly, it's clunky, it's it's you know imperfect, but it is honest, you know. And I think what is difficult is gauging, you know, it's gauging our current turnaround time because it fluctuates. You know, people also don't understand. I've heard I've heard complaints, just kind of you know scrolling through comments, keeping myself up at night, where people are saying you know. My order was placed on May 21st, and this guy got his cards back on, and he submitted on May 23rd. Yeah. Now, how did he submit two days later than me, but his cards are back? Yeah. And there's just so many questions I have for them. You know, what did you submit? Were the cards oversized? Did you submit 2020 Pops Baseball, or did you submit, you know, 1880s European women cards? Yeah. You know, yeah. what are we talking about here? And yeah. There's just a lot that goes into the There's a lot of variables. Yeah, a lot of variables in the in the cards, you know, uh, with the different, uh, like you said, an 1880s card to a 2020 card. Uh, it's it's hard, you know. The time's gonna be different. It's it's like it's like cooking different uh, uh, ingredients, you know. Some some are gonna take longer to cook, and and others will be. You know, you can microwave them, let's say, and, uh, you know, that, that's par for the course. So, you know, to be fully, tra- it's a good segue here, Peter, too, because to be fully transparent, I asked, uh, you know, on my social medias, uh, knowing I was going to be talking to you, questions they kind of wanted answers. I didn't want someone to say, oh, you know, John had him on, but he didn't ask him this and didn't ask him that. You sort of kind of answered one of the, the most common one that I got, Um which was, you know, that a lot of people are saying, well, I have a 20-day submission and I'm on the 60th day. And you've kind of already uh, answered that with what you just said, that, uh, you know, a lot of variables, you kind of really got uh, an influx uh, to a level maybe you weren't exactly prepared for and you were honest um, there. I don't, you know, I don't know if you want to elaborate any more on that question. I mean, the only thing I'll say is we were not exactly prepared for it. We weren't yeah. even close. Yeah. We were not close. <laughs> if, if you saw what our office looked like, you know, right back then when we didn't have, you know, the, the 50 employees that we've hired since that time. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it's like I said, it's it's quite amazing that it, that it was um, right in the heart of it all. When, uh, unfortunately, kind of a lot of this damage was done, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like we've been knocked, at, knocked down and... We're, we're not only ready to get back up, but we're back up. So we're back up and we're, we're punching back harder than we ever have. Yeah. So be patient, I guess, is is the answer to that question. You're, you're, you know, like you said, you, you, you know, you've kind of uh, kicked it into a, a, another gear. And so you should be, you know, slowly but surely uh, uh, catching up with, with those. I'm a full disclosure. 
I have an order that's in. That's you know. So if anyone thinks I get like you know uh, crazy special front of the line treatment, uh, you know, I have an order that's that's in there a little bit, and I'm patiently, you know, maybe I'm I'm getting more patient in my old age, but uh, I'm patiently waiting, and and I know what you guys are. You know, maybe I, maybe the only advantage I do have is in speaking to you. I know you know some of the things you're dealing with, so it's easy for me to be a little more patient. I think those that hear this uh, interview, this conversation, uh, it'll fill in, hopefully, uh, for those, some people that are, are waiting too, it'll fill in some of those questions uh, that they have and maybe they'll understand why, uh, you know, stuff's not back uh, as quick as as we like, you know. And, uh, you know, the hobby in general is, you know, instant gratification. People want their stuff you know, yesterday, and then, you know, that's, that's, that's a tall order for anybody to, to, to ask for, and, you, you know, so be patient, um, you know, you, you got to kick it into another gear. The other question I got is a lot of people, you know, the $100 need it now uh, level, Peter, obviously that's going to be a quick, uh, someone needs that, it's a priority type of thing, um, the, the two questions I got pertaining to that to ask you is, is number one, uh, how on point are you with getting the, that level back? And how much of effect is that level having on the non-need-it-now level? Right. So one thing I'm very happy with is that I, we don't actually have any regrets about doing this. There was, yeah. you know, obviously, it was kind of a controversial thing. It really shook, shook things up in, in our space. But... Um, no regrets in the best way because the reason being is um, we basically get those cards back. I, I would say, you know, just kind of a little secret, probably quicker than two days, either, yeah. um, just to give those guys an extra kind of hug, you know, for, for, for going ahead and paying that premium. Um, those, cards, those cards usually go out the same day that they're submitted. Mm -hmm. and the beautiful thing is they do not cut into the standard orders whatsoever because there's a few of them. There's not that, you know, it's not crazy. We don't bring in, you know, just just bins and bins and bins of cards being submitted at the $100 level, and that's why we chose that price point. Yeah. Because we figured it was a viable option that would be used, you know, under the right circumstances, but at the same time, it's not going to cripple us like these 10, 15, 5-day orders were at just really a fraction of, of you know, really just a, just a little uptick in price and you were kind of totally cutting the entire line. And again, that was what worked in the old days when SGC was a company with, you know, a few really hardworking people keeping it running. You know, now we're a business that's taking on two giants and we're doing very well, you know, in, in accomplishing our goals. So we've had to change it. But the good news is that particular change, as far as the Need It Now service, you pay us a hundred dollars to get your card back. You're going to get it back, and if you don't get it back, you let you let our customer service department know, and we're going to get that back to you. <laughs> and, yeah. And we're going to help you out in addition to that, because it's just you know this. I didn't want to have a two day service that was really twelve days. That was kind of the whole point of doing this. Yeah. I've seen some of the other folks um, come out with updates, and it's like, all right, now our ten business day is you know 13 weeks and our two day is 18 days and i'm just scratching my head like why is this industry so weird yeah <laughs> you know why is this industry so different than every other industry yeah and instead i kind of put in place i guess you could say a weird policy to counteract that but at least it's honest you know and yeah that we got two days or we got get in line yeah and yeah we, Love the guys who get in line and we're doing our best for you, but you know we make no qualms about it. That's that's what you're. Uh, that's what we're we're doing for you. And and a little another little segue here, parallel. You know anyone that's either following this show on social media or has listened to the, the few past episodes. Even uh, there was a person locally here that reached out to me uh, with uh, two 1947 bond bread Jackie Robinsons and. Uh, you know, called me up, had uh, multiple conversations, and I uh, instructed them their number one thing to do was get these graded uh, right away or as quick as they can to, number one, uh, you know, deem them authentic, and then 
uh, secondary, what condition uh, are they in? Because it, it was basically an inheritance. A, a mother passed it down. This was the daughter who, who reached out to me. And I, I told him, you got to get these things graded. Sure, you can sell them raw, but uh, uh, not going to go as much. There's going to be some questions to authenticity. And then anyone that listens to the show knows that if you sell any car raw, right, the old switcheroo is always uh, on the table, and that would be terrible involving uh, cards like that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I pointed this uh, lady in the direction of SGC. I, I told her to... Um, to Go on, the, you know, for these type of cards, uh, the Jackie Robinson 1947 Bond Breads, I, you know, buck up and pay the $100, uh, need it now on both of those cards. Uh, she just uh, called me uh, yesterday, said that uh, she did, and they're on their way to Boca Raton. And so we're going to see this literally uh, in action. And, uh, you know, being a huge Jackie Robinson guy, I'm, I'm really curious uh, at how these things are going to uh, turn out. But there's there's a great scenario, uh, Peter, where, you know, certain things fit that bill and, and you have that option there for for those folks. You know, uh, I have, if I'm sending in some Zion Williamson's, I don't I don't mind paying the 10 bucks and waiting uh, a couple months. You know, he's he's you know, 20 years old and, and hopefully for his sake and the hobby's sake has a long career ahead of him. And, uh, I'm not in necessary in a car with a card like that, for example, uh, in a rush, you know, uh, 40 days and, and two days is not going to be a lot of difference there. So every card uh, is not the same story and, and that need it now, uh, niche, you know, with a, with a, especially with a vintage card or something that someone's concerned with authentic, authenticity wise, you know, or maybe it might even be, Hey, I, I want this card from you. I'm a little leery about its authenticity. Can you, can you get that? To, you know, I'll, I'll agree to the deal based on that, that it's graded authentic. And then we, you know, even maybe I've, I've heard of deals like this happening in the past where the deals consummated. If it grades this, I'll pay this. If it's, you know, and that sort of thing, and so there's there's a a, a need for it, a, a a reason for it, and I just I'm dealing with one in a sense. I'm facilitating that deal, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, where you know that that should be expedited so they can, uh, you know, you know she's not a card collector, so she's not going to keep them, and so you know she wants to expedite the whole process and. Uh, there's a perfect, uh, perfect example of where that comes into play. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, that is that's certainly an example that would apply to you know the need for the need it now service. I think even just thinking, kind of running through it in my head. I mean, we all are seeing these crazy, crazy modern spikes. You know, yeah. it's like oh, a yeah. guy, guy scores a few goals in a soccer game, or you know has two triple doubles in a row, and all of a sudden his card has jumped literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars in some cases far more than that i mean that's yeah. also a great case you know i'm not i'm not bsing you when i say you know one to two days that's what you're that's what you're looking at yeah you know you pay for standard overnight shipping i mean that card leaves on on you know wednesday it's coming back to you on saturday you know in your hands that's yeah pretty special. that's something that that really at least at that price point has has not really been uh offered at least as far as, I'm, as, as far as I know um, in this hobby. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to convince everyone to use it because some of you I probably tell you not to use it because it's just not a fit for the current card that you're holding. Yep. Um, however, there are a lot of cards that, that that service can be really great for you at, you know? And yep. I think that the people who have used it, at least from the few that I've spoken to, are very happy and don't regret that they used it. You know, we had yep. a beautiful... I remember, um, you know, I walk around, I, I, I'm rarely in my office. I'm overseeing a lot of what we're doing, and there was a pretty awesome uh, Mike Trout. I think it was out of Luminaries, and it was a, uh, it was like a triple patch auto, one of one. And the guy paid 100 bucks, and he got a 9510 on a card that, you know, predominantly, obviously, your thicker cards have condition issues. So he pulled a great grade, card looked amazing in the holder, and it was returned to him the same day. Yeah. Like, 
I'm sorry, what a beautiful transaction. <laughs> yeah. Know, the guy, he gives us what we need to make it happen, and we make it happen for him. That's the kind of thing that I look to uh, to have across the board at SGC. You know, it's great that, that we can offer that service, but it would be even greater if we could offer a few more and actually, you know, stand by it and, and you know, live up to the service that we're, we're telling you we're providing. And that's the goal, man. It's just to catch up at every level and, you know, really to um, – just be as, as collector centric as possible and make it about them and, and less about us. Okay, folks, John Newman here. Uh, this interview is an hour and 20 minutes long. And so I didn't want to put it all on one, one episode. I thought that was a bit much. So I broke these up into two parts. So what you heard was the first half of the interview on episode 94 next week. So, uh, the continuation will continue next week uh, with Peter Steinberg. Many more interesting nuggets and info. Uh, your questions answered. Uh, so definitely check back on episode 94 for the completion uh, of this lo- very long interview. Oh, I know the chunky that left these chunkies. <laughs> Newman! Open the door, Newman. I know you're in there. Hello, Jerry. All right, it's time for Newman's Rambling, where I select one question I get each week and answer it on the air. John, you seem like an astute man. Thank you, Mr. Walken. Maybe you can help explain something to me. Well, I'll give it my best shot. All right, this question comes by way of Instagram from user WalkingBuckCards. WalkingBuckCards. It's a football question. I figure... Uh, great to have a football question when we're when you're here in this show. Football season has started now. Whether we finish or not, that's a whole other uh, episode. But uh, football season has started, and Walking Buck Cards asked me to name a a bounce back player. Now I know that's sort of not really a card question; it's more of a like a fantasy football or sports question. But as we all know. Uh, performance definitely affects uh, cards. And so my bounce back player, hate to say it, because if you know I'm a Steeler fan, uh, but uh, this guy's in the same division. He's sort of an afterthought uh, already. People have written this, this player off, think he's kind of done. And I, I know he's not young, and he's on the backside of his career, but I think if he, obviously it's the old cliche, right? If he stays healthy, which is part of what he's having trouble doing. But I think A.J. Green is back and will have a a really solid year. I think he he gets through the year, plays the full year, and puts up decent numbers with Joe Burrow and kind of gets hobby people talking a little bit uh, again. You know, uh, probably, you know, one of those iffy, Hall of Famers, when you look at the numbers, they should get him in. And I think a good year uh, this year gets him sort of that buzz, a little bit of the buzz uh, going again. And if if he has a really good year, Cincinnati wins some games. Joe Burrow excites not only Bengals fans, but the hobby as a quarterback. And we know how that goes. Uh, This could be sort of a a bounce back for A.J. Green. So I'm going to, you know, being a Steeler fan, it hurts to say uh, walking about cards, but I'm going uh, with your question. I'm going with A.J. Green to kind of people have already kind of put dirt on him and buried him and and ended his career. But I think A.J. Green is going to say not so fast, my friend, like Lee Corso. And so A.J. Green uh, will try to quiet the critics who think his career is over. The Star Stock Selling Platform is live and booming, quickly becoming the premier sports card marketplace aimed to be the fastest, most efficient platform to buy or sell your cards. No insertion fees, they do all the work, cards are safely secure in their vault, and their 5% sales commission is one of the lowest in the industry. They are accepting rookie and prospect cards and now also accepting graded cards. Go check them out at StarStock.com. All right, time to announce this week's free $25 break credit 
winner, courtesy of 101 Card Shop. Congrats to them as they get ready to open up their brand new store. And uh, they give, uh, they're give they nice enough as a sponsor to let us give away $25 break credit uh, each week. And so without further ado, let's uh, we use retweet draw to pick our winner. And the winner is at MCL723 Matt Lipsky. MCL723 Matt Lipsky. Congratulations, you're this week's winner of the $25 free break credit. We love our listeners. Without you, there is no us. We care about your opinions and feedback and invite you to reach out to us on any of our social media accounts. On Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast. Twitter at Sports Card N-A-T-I-1. Or email the show at SportsCardNationPC at gmail.com. We don't ask for much, but if you really like the show, give us a shout out. Tell your friends or give us a follow on our social medias. If you enjoy the show, please give us a positive review on iTunes or any of the platforms you are listening on. Thank you. All right, that brings episode 93 to a close. First off, I want to thank Mr. Peter Steinberg, president of SGC, for giving us a lot of time. You heard half the interview or a little more than half the interview today. The second half will be next Friday on episode 94, part two of our interview. Again, I didn't want to put it all on one show and make this show way too long, truth be told. So we will have the conclusion of that interview uh, next week. Uh, Some more upcoming events. I had my dad in studio, uh, 82 years old, and uh, he will be on a future episode as... Inspired by Dr. Beckett having his dad on his show to reminisce about days of old. My dad is from Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Went to many, many, many a game in Ebbets Field. Got to meet the players, shook hands with them. And we're going to go back to the 40s and 50s in Brooklyn and talk about the Brooklyn Dodgers, Jackie Robinson, Gil Hodges, and the like. We're going to talk to them about cards uh, in general uh, back then, uh, which were a lot different than the hobby we know today. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, when Babe Ruth passed away. We're going to talk about when the Dodgers left Brooklyn. And he's going to bring you back uh, to a time period uh, that many of us, most of us, aren't familiar with. We weren't alive then. He was. And so I found it very interesting. I I heard some of the stories before, and there were some new ones as well, which was kind of cool. He got emotional, uh, so the, that uh, you know that's a good thing to to be an emotional person. I, I can get that way uh, myself, so uh, I'm glad I did it. It will be either the 25th or the second, not sure yet, but it'll be uh, coming up. And then also confirmed, uh, actually not too long ago. Uh, Mr. Brandon Steiner from Steiner Sports Marketing. Uh, Steiner Sports, uh, very uh, famous individual. And uh, he's going to be joining the program. He's from my hometown of Brooklyn. And he's also a Syracuse University alum. And here we are in Syracuse. So there's a connection there. And uh, he's been gracious enough to uh, come on and and talk to us about uh, what he's doing, uh, his career, uh, you know, he recently sold Steiner Sports to Fanatics, and uh, now he's got a, a new company which he has launched. So I'm sure we'll we'll touch on all that stuff. And so we continue to try to bring you great guests from my dad all the way to Brandon Steiner, uh, Peter Steinberg, and you never know who you hear uh, on the Sports Carnation, and that's the uh, the beauty of the guest list. So. Uh, but none of this is all, at all possible without you, the listener. Uh, you don't listen to the show, we don't have a show. And so uh, I always say thank you, and I'll say it again, and I can't say it enough. Uh, thank you for making this show uh, what it is, and uh, I really do uh, appreciate it. So that's what we got coming up. 
Hobby Hotline will still be going on on Saturdays. We have a whole new lineup. I, I talked about it uh, last week. We have some familiar faces, some new faces, and you never know who might get added in the future. That's every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we're going to try to put out who's on the show uh, a week in advance so you know who to look forward to. We are approaching episode 100 on this show we are going to give away mega prizes it's going to be a halloween live edition right now tentatively scheduled for october 31st at 1 p.m eastern time it will be a live first ever sports car nation live uh my guests have confirmed i'm happy to announce and they are none other none other than dr james beckett Brody the Kid, and Drew Herndon from Let Me Get That Autograph. And so kind of encompasses uh, my podcast uh, life when I first got in it. Uh, Drew was a great help. Dr. Beckett is an icon that for someone who started out as a kid dealer all the way up until now is someone that means a lot to me. I've gotten to know him personally. Uh, formed a friendship, and uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And Brody the Kid, you know me, kids are important uh, to this hobby, and Brody is a great ambassador doing it right at 13 years old, up in front of that that uh, camera, and uh, not shy and doing a great job. And if, uh, if that's the future of the hobby, we're all going to be in really good shape. So uh, I won't keep you any further. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, take some time uh, this time of year, September 11th and this week. Uh, please think about those uh, we lost on that tragic day. Uh, you know, first responders, uh, innocent lives, not just in New York where I'm from, but Washington and Shanksville, Pennsylvania uh, as well. And so uh, think about all those that are no longer with us and uh, do good deeds and good things and we'll see you. Uh, next week with uh, the second half of the Peter Steinberg uh, interview. Thanks, everyone. Take care. God bless. You've been listening to the Sports Card Nation podcast. Join host John Newman next week as he gives you another jam-packed episode of all things related to the sports card hobby. And a little extra fun, too. Don't forget to check out the show on Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast.